taught you to hate the color of your skin? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? Change it. So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you? Most of us blacks, Negroes as he called us, really thought we were free without being aware that in our subconscious. So we start off. With all those chains hmm? we thought had been struck you got off an echo out here. were still there. And there were many ways where what really motivated us, motivated us was our desire to be loved by the white man. Malcolm meant to lance that sense of fear. He knew it would be painful. He knew that people could kill you because of it, but he dared to take that risk. He was saying something over and above that of any other leader of that day while the other leaders were begging for entry into the house of their oppressor, he was telling you to build your own house. He expelled fear from American. He says, I will speak out loud what we've been thinking. And he said, you'll see, people will hear it and they will not do anything to us necessarily okay. But I will not make it for the masses of people. When he said it in a very strong fashion, in this very manly fashion, in this fashion that says, I am not afraid to say what you've been thinking all these years. That's why we loved him. He said it out loud, not behind the door. He said it in the eyes. Sorry about the audio on that. Uh, it seems to be uh, my computer was off when I recorded that. Uh, welcome to the show today, uh, Dr. Philip Valentine, metaphysician, uh, healer. I call him mental healer and physical healer, and good friend of mine. Uh, has uh, taught us a lot about our spirituality and and really some and really some of the fallacies about religion that we all take so dear to our heart. Uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Valentine. Thank you. It's been a while. I ran your last a uh, couple of your shows for the latter part of the year, the last two weeks in the year, and, and the response is always overwhelming. When are you bringing them back? You know, uh, a lot of comments about what you say, which is um, different, or something that people know about and won't say, or your take on religion and uh, what spell we're under. Matter of fact, the biggest response I got was to uh, the metaphysical analysis of the Matrix 2, the movie, where you talked about mind control and the whole idea of uh, what the movie had to say about. And what I really wanted to talk about today was um, the psychological effects of racism and what it does to the mind, what it's done to us as a people, and the oppression that uh, it, it, it hovers, what, what sort of lingering effect all these years of uh, not knowing yourself, knowing lies. You know, I can go back to the years that I knew nothing about my history, and, and it was very difficult for me to really, you know, exist as a human being, knowing nothing about Africa but Tarzan movies. I'll go back to those days. And then being enlightened by Dr. Clark and uh, scholars like yourself and today Dr. Ben and Dr. Jeffries and they talk, talk about you know uh, the European was in the cave when we were building pyramids. So now if I had some of that knowledge back then like, like when I was 14 and Emmett Till was killed I could have you know fought the battle of uh, being an individual and even you know even stronger back in those days. And I can just say to myself only personal uh, the side effects of all that racism through the years and, and how it affects us today. Give us your take on uh, what that does to the mind. Well, before we uh, move into that, I'd like, if it's your permission, to take a minute or two or just a little time to speak about a brother mm -hmm. who 
was <clears throat> my childhood friend mm. and who I have known all my life. It's like my brother passed away just recently. Uh, okay. I'd like to um, put the name and make it immortal. My brother Ron Edmonds, a.k.a. C. Mm. Um, beautiful brother, warm, loving, and... Um, passed away just recently and I just want to put his name out there and um, tell him that uh, I still love him always mm -hmm. have and uh, hope he's around just kind of checking it out before he makes the uh, the next leg of his journey out of here so brother C brother Ron love you and uh, I guess I could just say goodbye Thank you for everything, for being my friend and everything that mm -hmm. you've given to me and my family. I love you. Anyway, I'd like to dedicate this uh, particular show to him. Well, you know his spirit's right here, wouldn't Oh, yeah. You? Feel him all the time. Felt him here when I was coming. But um, mm. I was coming here to the studio. A, to take a few minutes and talk about that, how the spirit lingers. Yeah, it lingers. It lingered um, yesterday when I got the actual message from a friend of ours. There were four wow. of us that hung out together. Nice. And um, everything we did together, we grew up together, um, met our first wives together. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything up through the stages. Um, <clears throat> my ex-wife, my first wife of 19 years, she called me and reminded me that she saw a movie just today. Uh, yesterday, I think, or the day before, called The Wood. Mm -hmm. And um, my part was, I think, Omar Epps, because I first came into the uh, into the um into America and I met him and met them and they introduced me. He was the first one to, he taught me how to play basketball. Ah, <laughs> ah. Yeah. Oh, so that's you just gone. imagine. Yeah. It was you were 16 when you first came in. No, no, no. I was, uh, I was 10 when oh, I came okay. in. Okay. Right. And I think I met him when I was about 13 or 14. Okay. And from then we, uh, we grew together and, uh, he had an incredible grasp of the game of basketball mm. and uh, football. And basketball specifically, he taught me the actual fundamentals of the game. I mean, I looked awkward and <laughs> crazy and stupid, but he helped me out. And uh, we, uh, every, I think, just to say this so we can go on with the show, but I think Not out of all the times we were with the four people that we were with, the four of us together going from different uh, parks to play basketball, I think out of the every time the four of us teamed up, I think anywhere between 80% of the games we played, we won mm -hmm. against trees and whoever it was. Trees, we talking about tall brothers. Right. We won because we were the old Nick philosophy, pass, 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 mm -hmm. pass, pass, the open man. And we always won. And he would, he would guide that. But, I mean, just taking it from that point, he, um, he was just a beautiful brother. And um, it's just unfortunate that uh, you know he couldn't be here for the next stage of the four of us of the three of us who was left at our development you know so we could actually see our great grandchildren and so forth mm. he leaves behind um, a daughter and um, I just want to say you know it's been good and with that said and now that he's immortalized um, I want to dedicate this show uh, to him now he asked me a question uh, that was very interesting uh, about the effects of racism. Well, most How did it of affect you guys when you were kids. There's a good one. Uh, you know, when you're young, you don't really see it. Uh, I was raised part of the way in Trinidad, where mm. there's an amalgamation of okay. all the races. I didn't know it until I actually stepped here. Okay. I um, I began to see it uh, more prevalently through the darker members of my family okay. as well as my friends. Okay. All of my friends, all the friends that I had who were darker than I, I okay. could, I didn't get it as much during right, those days right. because, the you know, when you light skin yeah, and, right, right, right. and you look that way, it, it, it kind of gives you a kind of a latitude or, you know, um, first choice. But uh, after everything said and done, I began to become more conscious of the race issue uh, based upon my mother uh, pointing out things in the movies to me. 
Ah, okay. And my father reinforcing that because my father was studious, a loner, and he came to him for more eclectic and really deep information. But the overall reinforcement of who I was and where I came from, who my ancestors were, came from my mother consistently being there to let me know when I was watching TV, watching Fred Astaire, seeing him dance and being mesmerized by all the things he was doing, she said, uh, that's a copycat, that's a carbon copy. And I said, what do you mean? Right. And then at the time, I did not, I wasn't exposed to all of the, you know, the melanated African peoples who were actually the ones they stole it from. Yeah, so yeah. the more uh, my Libra energy had to balance out, the more I began to see injustice, the more I began to pursue what was it that I was looking at that was behind the injustices, who were behind the injustices, mm -hmm. what were the circumstances that set it up, and I began to delve deeper and deeper into history. The metaphysical and the psychological part came later on when I began getting more into metaphysics and studying the deeper sides mm -hmm. of spirituality. Uh, I see the effects of... Um, so-called racism, uh, essentially just hatred, that's what it is. Uh, I, see the, I see the results of that in the education system, in the way people, uh, sure. um, the way people worship the day, uh, the fact that the gods that we worship don't look like us. I mm -hmm. see the effects in the way that um, our children view themselves um, between dog and bitch. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe, I believe that uh, the, the sense of racism that we are a, we are a well, um, a well conditioned, um, mm. well manicured, uh, um, I guess what is that word, hollowed out, and uh, a very polished slave. We okay. we look very good at the job of being a slave now. Uh, because under the um, under the tutelage of uh, the uh, Willie Lynch, oh, that's we that we yeah. and uh, which uh, essentially is nothing more than the 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 esoteric tenets of the Jesuits. Okay. Now the Willie Lynch theory went over last week about. Light against dark, uh, mm -hmm. old against young, and uh, yeah, these were the policies of the Jesuits when they okay. first came into the so-called New World, which is the old world. You're talking 1610. Mm-hmm. In the 1600s, okay. between, for instance, they used to have something called the reductions that the Jesuits set up down in uh, the Guarani natives in okay. the the lower part of South America, the okay. south mm -hmm. southwestern part of South America, mm -hmm. and the Guarani uh, reductions from 1603 to 1785, I believe. Uh, these became the models for what you see today as the projects. Yeah, that's also Machiavelli, too. Well, yeah. Okay. All of it being Jesuitical. Okay. Um, all being the, the, I guess, the seed of that mastermind, uh, Ignatius Loyola, whose okay. name was Ignatio de Racalde, which mm. was his real name. Okay. Um, he was a Jesuit. He was no. He created the Jesuits. Okay. Actually, the Society of okay. Jesus, which okay. became euphemistically known as the Jesuits. Okay. But the Jesuits set down the precedent. He, Ignatio or uh, Ignatius, was actually a student of the assassins, who began in the East. Um, he studied. I believe his name was Hassan, mm -hmm. who actually put together the assassins, and which became the most powerful. Uh, secret order of its time, um, even okay. to the point of the Illuminati, which actually began in Afghanistan. Okay. Um, the Illuminati started in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. The first of the Illuminati, the first um, naming of the Illuminated Ones was in oh. Afghanistan, which then puts together a little piece of the puzzle of why we're over there. Now, Illuminatis and, and Jesuits are one in the same. One in the same. One in the same. One in the same order. The one that was actually resuscitated by um, Adam Weishoff, who under the Weissoff. Black Pope was given that information. Okay. In other words, the Black Pope, I forgot his name, uh, uh, I think his name was um, Lombardio, or uh, Lombard Lombardirio. Mm -hmm. I'll get his real name, but he was the Black Pope at the time when he commissioned Adam Weishoff. Now, Black Pope doesn't mean complexion. No, the Black Pope essentially is the one who wears nothing but the black robes. Okay. Uh, you see a movie about with, um, what's his name, um, who's the, uh, Robert De Niro. 
Okay. He had a, he did a movie called Black Robes. I didn't see that. One. Yeah, that's one that they didn't Recent? really want to show. Yeah, no, this was a while back. Okay. And this was his story about the Jesuits going in to convert the natives, to mm. bring them under Catholicism okay. or Romanism at the time. Now, we're talking about the basis of uh, the Willie Lynch theory. Well, yeah, started. this is where it all started, okay. actually. This is where Willie Lynch started. actually was started in 1712. Right. 1712 essentially was, you see, what happened is through... The plantation the owner came over. And right, okay. exactly. But he came based upon the Jew Jesuitical Oh, so reduction. he got this from the... Right, ah, exactly. Nobody's okay. traced it beyond oh, Willie Lynch. Okay. Willie Lynch came from the Jesuits' circle, their enclave, ah, because in 16, okay. in 16, 13, you. around that yeah. time, 1650... Okay. The beginnings of slavery. The beginnings of okay. how to enslave what okay. they, what they re received as ah. these soft and very loving people that they met. It was very easy to, you know, to oh, wow. overwhelm them. Because we were so full of spirit. Right, so they were... Soul. Right, and they were into graciousness. They welcomed them. They welcomed the Jesuits. So the Jesuits mm. began uh, breaking down the, the people very quickly, destroying their social fabric and incorporating something that became what we are doing today as communism. In fact, the reductions, what we'll first call the Guarani reductions, mm. became the, the um, template for communism and socialism okay. and the way they break down um, states and, um, and districts and cities and okay. so forth and uh, what we see as projects and ghettos and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, that all, that's how th it actually became that. So um, the, the system of racism uh, actually came out of the Vatican. Wow. And it was mm. perfected by the Jesuits doing the trial and error on the native peoples of South America now let me and later your, in Africa. Your, your stance on the Vatican, since you were raised a Catholic, mm -hmm. A lot of you people uh, don't realize that uh, Dr. Valentine is a strong believer in God or mm -hmm. uh, this concept of God or the beginnings of a, a, a power beyond our concept or beyond our, our reach mm -hmm. or knowledge. But uh, a lot of people will say that you're anti-Christ or anti-religion. Uh, uh, I've got a lot mm -hmm. of questions about that, but I told them, well, you're a strong believer in God, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But just to give them a little brief understanding about your early beginnings in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you as a child were raised in the Catholic Church. So you talk about the Vatican. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about from experience where yes. you learn to, to, to find your self-esteem mm -hmm. by investigating all these lies that you were told as a child. Exactly. Okay. And that, that I was a staunch Catholic, took communion, took my confirmation, okay. went to all the Catholic schools up until the last year of high school. Okay. You know, some people go to Catholic school just for the first okay. parts of their, my whole education was Catholic. So when you talk I about the Vatican, you talk from experience. I talk from experience based okay. upon what it is that I know went on, how the rituals went, all of the things, and then okay. studying on a broader base, from a broader base of information, began to put two and two together okay. when I began all to right. see um, how the world was really run. Mm -hmm. um, as, as we see, as far as my belief in Christ and Jesus, if we began to do an entomological, an epistemological breakdown mm -hmm. of the words Christ and Jesus, then we would understand or understand or overstand that these principles, not person, okay. but this principle was something that predates Christianity mm -hmm. by tens of thousands of years. Being Christ-like. Yeah, the Christ okay. itself, okay. which came from the Hindu, which came essentially from the Ethiopic Chris mm -hmm. or Krishna mm -hmm. or Krish. These words were the way we defined the light, mm -hmm. in this case the sun. So when or the uh, knowledge. Yeah. Well no, knowledge itself of science. We were scientists, we weren't religionists. Okay. We understood and understood how the spirit moved and that all science was based on the spirit. Today okay. you can't say that. Mm -hmm. You can't say that inside of the halls of academia and hope to keep your credentials. Okay. Otherwise, they'll just brand you as either or. You're either a religious mm -hmm. fanatic or you're just a cold scientist uh, mm -hmm. or, or pragmatic scientist. Mm -hmm. Whereas that fragmentation was a purposeful fragmentation by the, um, the present powers that be mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, the Jesuits being in control of that. The education system, for instance, is a fractionalized system mm -hmm. where whole concepts were broken down into subjects. That's why when you go to school today, you take subjects. Okay. They're not whole themes. You're taught in fragments mm -hmm. so that you would then pursue a line of course or career where you would study one thing, I would then pursue something else, but I would not know what you did or what you studied because I'd have to come to you because you became an expert along that fractionalized line of thinking. English. That's how you keep people separated, ah. and that's how you maintain this discourse of whether I'm right or wrong and not teaching people how to think in whole concepts. Okay. So we were raised in an education system that is based in fractionalized thinking. We can't think in whole concepts, thus we can't figure out how they're ruling us because we only have one piece of the puzzle. We can't figure out that the whole voting scam that we've got to participate mm -hmm. in, this okay. ritual called voting today, mm -hmm. Uh, we can't figure out wh what that it has been fractionalized into teams playing in the same arena, playing with two sides or two coaches who are owned by the same um, NFL. And who is the NFL? The Vatican. Corporation. The corporation. Okay. They say, well, you have to vote. You have to go out there and vote so that we, your, your voice will be heard. Mm. My brothers and sisters, my people, you, you like the Hosea, like Hosea says, you, you perish for lack of knowledge. First and foremost, how just to think about this, with the amount of intrigue, international intrigue, and the amount of po political gerrymandering of this planet, uh, the different secret societies that mm. play their games, the secret uh, uh, organizations, Illuminati, Illuminati, the CIA, everybody. With okay. all of the intrigue that the upper elite, quote unquote, and I know my friend Nathan Joyce doesn't call them elite, mm -hmm. um, these people who portend to be the elite, um, they have a whole other world they live in. Yes. And the world is being orchestrated according to what they have, that they set as the rules. What is Do you Bush, believe? What is Bush fit in? Well, let me just finish this thought. Do you believe that Bush or any of these so-called uh, people in the elite, knowing that they have been keeping secrets from you and the audience, mm -hmm. from the people, do you think that they would leave the choice of leadership for the planet in the hands of ignorant cattle who they have been herding, butchering, fleecing, and using for their own ends? Do you believe you would hand over your fate to cattle? No. First and foremost, well, we you can't have go nothing. out without a fight now. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold up. You don't vote. Your vote doesn't elect anyone, maybe in the lower echelon ranks of, you know, um, administrators overseer. and so forth. <laughs> Just little overseers <laughs> that you have in, in, in some of these little uh, enclaves of government, local government. Maybe you have some kind of input. Even that is, is orchestrated. But when you start getting up into the higher organizations, when you start dealing with presidential, governor, mayor, these mm. people are put in based upon who they are and who they've been selected from the time they've been going to school, okay. these elect schools that they've been chosen to go to when they've been children. The president is not elected by the people. That was, that's ridiculous to think that because you're bankrupt as a people. You have no worth. There is no money. So you can't be elected. The president is selected. First and foremost... And most of them are Masons. Well, all of them are Masons. All of them are Masons. First and foremost, it is, you believe it's the, it's the Electoral College. The Electoral College doesn't elect anyone. Okay. Who selects is the, um, the, card, the College of Cardinals in Rome. You mean the Pope reaches all the way to America? And the Pope or the has... Or the Jesuits are still... There is a law that states that the Pope can override any law that the United States makes. There is a law on the books that says the Pope can override any law. He is the supreme being on the planet. Hmm. Now, how many people really know about this? Well, whoever's looking at you, they, they know, know now. now. Yeah. But to say this is that you have no real, um, you have no real uh, discourse. You have no real say. 
in anything that you do. And cattle have least to say as they're being led to the slaughter. So essentially, you are a body. You are a slave. And the fact that they gave you the new $20 bill, everybody, that oh. is called, um, um, mm. I forgot what it's called legally. You receiving that $20 bill means that you agree to the refinancing of the debt that now is in the trillions. You now agree to take the cut in worth, in your worth, which means the jails will be filling up, which means your children will be put out there as cannon fodder around the world as policemen, as the front line. Um, United States of America now is being slowly bracketed in because <clears throat> sooner or later your money will not be able to be traded for any other currency, international currency, which means you're going to be self-locked in by your own currency. Well, when is all this going to end? You said today we're leaving, all these evil people were leaving the planet. <laughs> no, I said a lot of the good people are leaving the planet. A lot of the good people are leaving the yeah. planet. On one show we did on an uh, analysis of uh, the Matrix 2, mm -hmm. you mentioned that, that uh, by 2012 there were a lot of the people, uh, well, a lot, there were a lot of visitations coming. and that There'll a be a lot of, of alignments, okay. a lot of um, old But the Illuminati is going to be left here controlling the planet? Well, oh, are they leaving too? I thought the, the evil ones were leaving. Well, let me just put you up to date. Remember I told you that there were already people living on Mars. There were already people living on oh, Mars. Oh, yes. They got about a million point three people living on Mars. A million right point now. three people living on Mars. Right now, you those heard people that are saying, here. <laughs> saying, oh, my God, he's out of his mind. <laughs> no, somebody called me and asked you if you were on crack. <laughs> yeah, spiritual crack. <laughs> She wouldn't leave a phone number, though. No, so. Yeah, they will. <laughs> a lot of people look at me and say, crazy bitch. You see, they actually <laughs> believe that a man walked on water. Well, hold it now. Hold that, it. Hold why it. Why couldn't that They happen? believe that they took why a rotting that? piece of flesh. Some man walked in and said, Lazarus, come forth. And they believe that. Now, these people, most of these well, people, you can raise people are critical dead, thinking. Can't you? No, hold on now. Let's just get to the reality of things. They actually believe now that some white man with a beard parted the waters. No, but we know he was Hold black. on now. Hold on. Black or white, he parted waters right. and swallowed up all of Egypt. And I told you, I showed you what a lie that was okay. by the fact that when they, when the, one of the, I think it was the fourth plague or the third plague, they wiped out all of the cattle and the horses in Egypt. Okay. And where do you get all the horses to chase the Jews? See, understand that we have people who have been through the education system, which is the Prussian system, Mm -hmm. We have been degenerated in our thinking process. We have been purposefully made into functional idiots. We look intelligent. People actually with PhD will sit up and give you all that they have been um, um, imbibing in the form of quote-unquote okay. knowledge and the ones who can regurgitate it and stay on that track. That's Those are called our doctors yeah, and our leaders and so forth. Service to self rather than service to others. There you go. But those who are serving the course of the Ph.D., which is a Prussian system of education, which is an indoctrinative system of education, okay. those are who we, uh, we resurrect or those who we sit on a pedestal. This man is a scholarly, this woman is scholarly, mm -hmm. because what? They regurgitated crap. It didn't mm -hmm. have anything to do with knowledge. Society has always moved forward spiritually, Mm -hmm. intellectually okay when someone says no to what the, the norm to the norm okay. to the way people are thinking okay. it is when we break away and that is the fear so that's what we're trying to do here here sure hopefully well hopefully we're trying to do that all right people come up to me all the time say thank you for the program here you're passing on knowledge uh, you know <laughs> get them back again we want to hear more well, especially uh, when we start talking about extraterrestrials in 2012. Um, well, let's give the people some sort of... We started out talking about 1610 and the beginnings of racism and yeah. giving people background of how this is all being organized by an elite group, mm. which still exists today. Again, that word elite, you know, in quotes. kind of sticks in my craw. Yeah, well, put it in quotes. the top 1% who are controlling everything. Yeah. What you say of the Jesuits or the Illuminatis or the Masons. Well, not the Masons. Uh, the Illuminatis well, the Masons, are part of the Masons. Well, the Masons were actually co-opted uh, co co and 
taken over by the Illuminati. Okay. All right. All right. But the Masons were actually more of a, uh, an intellectual group of peoples who tried to keep the Eastern philosophies alive okay. and in so doing trying to maintain uh, some higher, more progressive way of thinking about the Most High. In fact, um, the whole concept of the Bible as people are reading it, if they understood the true history of the present 1611 uh, um, uh, one that became the most popular book, okay. that was that? actually written by a Rosicrucian. Actually, it was edited by a Rosicrucian. Okay. Okay. Um, his name was uh, Sir Francis Bacon, Sir Francis Bacon, also known as William Shakespeare. Oh, wow. Or Edward de Vere. That's interesting. Yes. I couldn't see. Phone call? Do you have a phone call up there? I didn't know you have to number up. All right, uh, we've got a phone call. That'd be interesting. All right, let's hear what you have to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, speak up. Hello. Hello. Yes, gentlemen. Yes. Um, I have to know, Mars? I'm this guy. I mean, I like him. I like what he's saying, but Mars, and the only way out, it seems like it's death for us to have any kind of satisfaction. Where's the fairness at? <laughs> where, where, the, where what was the question? Where's the fairness? Um, what was the question? The question is Mars. I mean, I know that there's more planets, but a million people on Mars? What kind of people? I don't understand that. I imagine it. it would be Martians. No, scientists <laughs> that they've been putting up there for a while. Who? Who's been putting scientists up there? I mean, Liz, I'm not laughing at you, please, but I've got to know what you're saying because your eyes speak the truth. What's your name? My name is Doris. Hi, Doris. I keep turning the TV down because so I, I can't hear you, but if I turn it up... What do you do, Doris? I work for the post office. Okay. Oh, great. All right. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, the United States government and most of the governments on the planet are at least 200 years ahead of us in technology. What we get as the cattle essentially keeps us within, uh, uh, within a time-space mm. relationship with the leadership on this planet. Um, there, are, there is evidence and there has been evidence of uh, life that has existed on Mars. In fact, they're bringing back information about um, life on other planets, particularly the moon uh, on Jupiter called Europa. They found ruins of temples. These are the uh, spacecrafts and the uh, cameras that they keep shooting up there. Um, they find evidence of life all throughout the galaxy, but uh, throughout the galaxy itself, but they could never actually admit to that because then it would completely um, uh, disassemble the present structure of, um, mm. of control when you know that life on other planets, especially around the religion of Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, that would completely uh, say, well, what, what happened to us? Weren't we the special ones that, that he came back to save? Or who were all these Martians and so forth? Not only that, they have found gold. Uh, they found, I believe, something called either helium-2 or hydrogen-2 up there, mm. which is an incredible source, fuel source. And they're about to now shoot up, uh, I think, space stations, mm -hmm. nuclear space okay. stations, to set up on the moon as well as Mars. Mm -hmm. So with, with President Bush speaking about the fact that we've got to get to Mars, know that any time they're making an announcement to the cattle or to the thousand-headed ass, know that we are at least 10 to 15 years behind in catching up to information. What we think is new mm -hmm. is old news to them. Well, you know, uh, Carla, what, what you yes. have to all also realize is that a lot of this stuff about, you know, uh, Roswell, 1945, is real. And a lot of the stuff that you see on uh, X-File, this is taken from actual, you know, uh, experiences that we have. See, the powers that be don't want us to know everything because there'll be panic on the planet. You know, a lot of the things that you've been told, just like racism and every, all the rest of it, are a bunch of lies. All right. Thank you for calling. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. You know, you you know, you've got a million Hello? people out there with Hello? a lot of questions, and uh, we appreciate you calling. All right. Uh, your question. Hello. Yes. Um, my name is Mrs. Hendricks, and I just want to say, um, if you can put the gentleman's name up on the screen, so I can know. And um, do you have you written a book? And I believe everything that comes out of your mouth. Trust me, I do. Mm -hmm. You may think that's strange, but it's not. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that black people are brain dead, and they don't want to know anything that's sort of like, you know, it's like if you don't see it, they don't believe it. Mm-hmm. And you should be like Malcolm X was on the corner on 25th Street telling all these people these things because we just don't see it, we don't understand it, we don't believe it. I say Bush is a murderer. Uh, mm-hmm. He's just out of his mind. Mm-hmm. People don't see it. And, and then the lady called, <clears throat> the sister in front of me, she was uh, mentioning something about uh, Mars. Mars. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all over the news. What planet does she live on? See, well, people, you know, a lot of people, people don't. No, want to, people don't don't look, don't don't pay attention. Well, a lot of people don't want to believe something, uh, yes. something like that yes. because they didn't read it in the Daily News. But I say we better wake up because we're sleeping. Well, now, doctor, have you written a book, please? No, uh, beloved. What I have though okay, is okay. a, a number. I have written a book called The Wounded Womb, which right. I'm getting ready to do a rewrite on. But All right. Um, I have a series of tapes. About I have done about over a hundred tapes. But oh, where can I get them? Um, my telephone number. I believe they're going to put up. If you, you wish, can, uh, I can give it to you. Oh sure. It's area code seven one eight. Seven. Okay. Two six four. Two six four. Nine four. Nine four. Nine seven. Nine seven. You need to go to all these schools and talk to these little black boys because they're lost. Yeah, I they, I, they, I do that. They, you know, if mm-hmm. I can get tapes and I can get with you. We'll talk, and I'll, and I'll take, I'll call a meeting at my house, and you come visit. I appreciate <laughs> it. God, you. I love you. I just love you. And, and, and Gilcrest, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, beloved. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye, dear. Uh, you, know, um, you know, we've got a lot of people that ask a lot of questions in the street. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's great that we do a call in with you here, uh, Dr. Valentine. Anybody else on the line? Hello? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. My name is um, D. Hi, D. Hi. My Your question. name is D? My, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, my question is, well, on Monday the 19th, which was uh, the King holiday, mm-hmm. I was on a flight coming from Savannah to Atlanta, and there was this bright star in the sky. Mm-hmm. It was about, let's say, 7, between 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. And no, no, I just wanted to know, did you, do you all know anything about that, that uh, star, or did you see it? Because the reason why I ask is because I also have... Um, something that I got off the internet, it's www.itv.com, and it says U- UFO spotted in Yorkshire, and it looks exactly mm. like the picture that they have here on the sheet of paper that I got off the internet, it looks exactly what I saw yes. coming from Savannah to Atlanta um, in the sky, and it says strange lights have been seen in the skies above Huddersfield, and not just one, and not just by one person, but by several people. Yes. So I'm just curious, do you all know anything about that? And like today I was trying to call CNN, a, a like the weather, weather channel, CNN, and the different news channels in Atlanta. And, of course, the meteorologists were not in, so I was just wondering if you all know anything about that. Can I ask like you one question first? Did, did you see it? Uh, did, you see it uh, uh, did you see it anywhere in the news? No, I haven't seen it okay. anywhere in the news. Okay. And like my, I but asked you saw it personally. some of the flight attendants, and one flight attendant, she said she thought it was planet Venus. It was like, it, she said that's a normal thing, and it's like, it, I guess each year around this time that it comes, Planet Venus, but I'm like, I don't know, I started thinking, like, I don't, you know, I don't know if, that, if she was correct. Mm-hmm. And then what, the other may. flight attendant, he thought that um, it was the North Star. Yeah, that's, if I may, um, uh, that's interesting because I have seen uh, these, these very things that you're talking about, and uh, you're going to see more of them. I don't know whether or not you saw one of the shows that we had done uh, together when I spoke about the fact that in 2004 there will be mass sightings by the the, right. the least of who you think would be doing it, people that have credentials that are irrefutable. And what's happening is, I, 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 I'm, I know I'm getting stepping out on a limb here by saying this, it, it, it was said that by the year 2004 all alien life forms who have been here manipulating human life Oh, that's right. Okay. Would have to leave by okay. 2004. Okay. So what we were, we may be able to see, what we may be seeing is a mass exodus of a lot of life forms that have been here manipulating the human strain oh, for a long okay. time, thousands upon thousands of years. Okay. The Galactic Confederation uh, has given or issued a mandate that the human species has been manipulated because we are purported to have over 52 different types of genetic strains. Mm-hmm. Uh, from around the, uh, the galaxy okay. put into one. We are essentially a bank, a holding, a library of different races and species. 
And uh, you mean the black uh, people in particular, or just well, mankind? the original people. Okay. The original species strain, the original consciousness template that created what we call humanity. Okay. We have within us a library that belongs to the stars. We are aliens to this planet. Yeah, I always thought. All right. Okay. We are essentially the matter that the stars give off. Whatever we breathe in, of mm -hmm. all the materials that the stars emanate and project to our planet we become. Okay. So we are being moved as a whole solar system into a whole new star field, like, okay. a, like the cornfield, like moving through a whole field of energy mm -hmm. that we have never been um, subjected to before. Okay. And now we are breathing a whole atmosphere, a different atmosphere. We are living in a whole other light frequency of consciousness. Is of that that black matter that you said yes, was coming Yes, the dark matter is now here, matter. that they found in Rome, of all places. Okay. So now this is now changing the infrastructure of the human but there are forces here that want to maintain the cattle as is because we are their lifeline they are parasites that have been feeding off of the particular consciousness that we have been dealing with for the last say well, ten thousand years when you said that the Illumina I, I thought you meant that those aliens were the Illuminati well let's not go there because see people are not ready to hear aliens when you say that word but it's like um, anti-semitic or it's like um, words that, but we see it, we know it. Wait, I mean, wait, 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 no, see, we can't, we have to learn But the people fact know that they exist. Well, listen, the, we have to learn the fact that semantics keeps us bottled in. The very fact that you or use Or ancestors, word, okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 semantics okay. keep us bottled in. All right. The language we use keeps the prison intact because the brain is now functioning off of descriptions. Mm -hmm. So now those descriptions are reinforced by words. Okay. We have to know that certain words have been entrained in us by the outer society, by those who are the puppets of the society right now. They have trained us to hate words, to okay. look at words and react, and to do what we do the way we do it, mm -hmm. according to training, when they say it on the television. They say terrorist. As soon as you hear terror, terrorism, terrorist, you're supposed to say, okay, whatever you say, Mr. Government Man, you must know because mm -hmm. you're protecting me. Again, we're conditioned slaves. So when I say the word alien, immediately you go to the TV or you go to your TV in your mind and you hear Sigourney Weaver or you hear mm -hmm. people laugh or be cynical the way they told you to act, especially if you're a newscaster. You act cynical when they say aliens from mm -hmm. another planet. You make light of it. But okay. the fact of the matter is, the United States government is about 200 years ahead in technologies. They are at this present time in Groom Lake, Area 51. They have been constantly over the last 75 years, or uh, even less, 75 since, years. Since Roswell. Right. They have been um, retrofitting and been experimenting on certain technologies. Okay. Um, you will be seeing more activity from the HARP technology, HARP? which is HARP. High uh, area auroral research project, which the Navy okay. has oh. up in Alaska, mm. in which they're building in Russia, in Europe, and in South America. Okay. And this is the weather control modulator. Weather control. Atmospheric control modulator, which essentially is supposed to be actually a ion, uh, uh, an, um, an electromagnetic um, instrument mm -hmm. that is about 10, 20 acres big. And these, this sets up a field in the ionosphere which creates a mirror so that you could bounce off a signal to be heard on the other side of the planet because since the planet curves, mm -hmm. you can't send a signal to somebody around the planet. You have to bounce it off of something. So in creating, they found out in creating that mirror in the ionosphere, they can bounce um, messages to somebody on the other side, but they found they also can control the weather. They can create typhoons. They can create wow. all kinds of hurricanes. They can do things that, that are weather modif modif modification. A movie called The Core came out where they said they had a seismic weapon. The mm -hmm. Russians have been experimenting on a seismic weapon for the last 20 years where they can create earthquakes as weapons. So know that Im immediately you saw that Iran just got hit in one of its oldest cities, killed off 11,000 people. When? when was about uh, two Iran. weeks ago, three weeks. Oh, Right, and now is not Iran the next target? Right, of course. When you start hearing about these seismic, oh, seis yeah, so you have okay. to know that they have technologies, the ability to see you from out of space. Movie just came on called Patriot Games. They can see they can see a license plate from out of space. They can read your license plates. This technology is nothing 
new. Know people, when you're listening to me, that anything they give you in the form of little gadgets, for instance, you, you, you're, you're getting your palm cell pilot phone. and all these cell phones. Right. This is toys compared to what they really have. They can actually mm -hmm. listen to each other on beams of laser light. Mm -hmm. They can hear you. They don't have to tap your phones anymore. They don't have to go and stick anything into your walls, right. although they do. Those who have new condominiums must know that there are microphones in those bricks. <laughs> anyway, so, so when you're dealing with, um, with light, you can actually beam a laser light at somebody's door and hear everything they're saying. You don't even have to go next to the door. So the technology is now proceeding in, in, in line for suppression of the population. The more you begin to adapt and, and, and to the technologies that you have, and you're going to be overloaded with it this year, the more you become a slave to the technology and the less you use this, mm -hmm. which is why children are given computers to figure out to add now. Whereas you are taught to add yeah, here. Yeah, in your head. Right. 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 Why? Right, right. Because they want you the dependent days. on the machinery. Right, right. In the old right. days, you had to know how to figure of things course. out in your head. Easily. That's because you were taught how to think, right. not what to right. think. Right, 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 right. Ooh. Yeah, I used to be add my... my yeah. yeah. I still yeah. can do it. My mother was... My I father was it. like, I you know, you give it. him the 10 times, 25 foot. Yeah. He just started rattling the door. I can still do it. Oh, yeah. I can still add my head. But, as we were saying, to the people who are out there... I, you know, I know that everybody thinks that I'm kind of the, the mad hatter. But again, remember, uh, no, you, you have sense. to go back. You have to go back and look at what it is that you believe in. You walk out of your home every Sunday to go and worship. You say that how? Well, how do you know? Well, you go out and worship somebody you never met. You don't know anything about who it is that wrote your Bible. You took it on face value, or from what your mother and your father and your grandparents gave you as information. Mm -hmm. You just know that God exists through Jesus Christ. You just know a Jesus Christ existed. You know all of this, but you can't believe or even come to understand or research the fact that we have people already on Mars. Okay. Now that's like, oh my God. How could you believe that somebody's on Mars? Well, how could you believe somebody is ascending up to heaven as we speak? Because if he ascended up to heaven, and we don't know where heaven is, if he was ascending at the speed of light, he'd still be ascending. So 2,000 years ago, your Jesus was ascending to heaven bodily, as they told you. But here you go, ascending into heaven, and you said he left. He had Isaac and, and, and whoever with him, mm -hmm. and they all ascended. If they ascended and they're going into heaven, did they get into a ship and go there? Or are they still ascending into heaven at the speed of light? Because at the speed of light, it'll take you like, you know, a, a million years to get to the other side of the universe. Mm. So is they, are they still in heaven, and where is heaven? Well, it's so, a level of consciousness, isn't it? I don't know. See, you don't teach people it's a level of consciousness, because then what happens? The people begin to start looking for that consciousness on their own. You well, have that's to keep what you the do. people. Isn't that how you find God? You look no, in the mirror you keep and reflect the on the God bracketed. that lies within. No, you keep the people bracketed within dogmatic symbols. The but people I mean, are what's, simplistic. What's the outlet? What's, what gets you away from that to find the God that lies within you? Well, first and foremost, how could you find the God that lies within you when you got a picture of the God as a white man with his little white angels, even in black churches down in Harlem? Well, we know th we know to differ with that. With that. Who that's knows? What we, to you differ and with I it. know. Oh, well, you this and I are sitting in this thing. No, no, no. We're well, not talking we're about you and I. No, we're trying to pass on the real information to the public. What I'm saying there. to you, Gil, is that you and I sitting here, if I'm talking to you, it's to the choir. I'm talking to them. Okay. I'm asking them to investigate what they believe in without having any evidence. They say they do it with faith, which is the, the not, they don't need no evidence. They just know and believe. But you believe in God. Again, when you say that, that's a, that's a loaded word, a loaded phrase. I believe in God. I don't believe in anything. I study to find out okay. what that thing is within me that mm -hmm. is elusive to all people, that okay. people think they need to have a symbol to identify. I don't need any symbols to identify myself because okay. myself keeps evolving. Mm -hmm. And each time I want to look at, quote, unquote, God, I go in the mirror to see what I have done okay. with myself. All right. So That's understand right. that, but they're not taught that. Okay. They tell you your Jesus is inside of you. Well, if Jesus is inside of me, then what do I need to go to church for? If Jesus is okay. inside of me, right. why do I need a priest telling me what the Bible means? Okay. It's nonsense. It's about keeping the cattle entertained. And you have Lobo, Globo, Creflo, Pimpadala, who is talking about all the kind of, uh, okay. what do you call it? Right. You've got TD snakes, all of them telling you, come to Jesus. 
Who's and that? they have these monumental synagogues of Satan with the bank, with the, with the, with the what do you call it, machines, the money machines in the back so that you mm -hmm. can pay up. This is ridiculous. You think this they're, is exactly they're, they're what Jesus. This is exactly what religion is. Religion is entertainment and entertainment. Mm -hmm. It is about keeping the cattle focused on one thing that God is outside of them. Once they find a divinity within, they okay. don't need a church. All right. All right. And the church becomes them. That's then right. they won't fall for no nonsense you are the in politics. Okay. And that's the problem again. Let me just say this before mm -hmm. I, when I close out. Politics and the writing of laws only come about when we lose contact with our own spirituality and our own sense of self. Mm. Your own instinct for right and wrong mm -hmm. supersedes all things because the divinity is already within you. If you don't believe the divinity right. is within you, right. you need somebody to write laws for you. Okay. But the laws, the laws, the divine laws are already in you. Mm -hmm. If you are living with that knowledge within you, you don't need to follow the laws written by man. Okay. All those who are interpreted by a man telling you it's from God. Okay. All right. The God in me loves the God in you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Next caller, please. That sounds like a spaceship. Hello. Yeah, they're landing. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Hello, caller? Hello. Yes. Hello? Caller? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hello. Hello. I cannot hear you all. all right, we can I hear you. Do or not? We can hear you. Hello. We can hear you. Okay. Well, I will just uh, ask my question. Well, this is uh, Bruce calling from Harlem. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay. Good. I'm like trying to turn my television down because it's weird. I can see your mouth moving, but I can't hear you at all. Okay. Anyway, um, uh. Brother uh, Phil Valentine, Dr. Valentine, I've been following you for a while, you and Bobby Hemet. Mm. I've been uh, listening to you guys for a while. I have a number of your tapes, in fact, from Brother Sarnetta. If you're familiar with him, I'm sure you are. And um, I guess, you know, the question that I have is uh, we, we as black people in, in 2004, I mean, given all that we've been through, now I have a friend that, that is also in the esoteric knowledge. And he told me, just to give you like a quick summation, he told me whenever he sees a police car, he automatically imagines that car just blowing up. Because, you know, I mean, that's, this is what he imagines. Now, I said, now, why, why would you do something like that? He said, because I am trying to tap into that power within mm. that black people don't know about, that they already have this power. He said, now, I'm just doing it. But imagine if a hundred black people mm. got together and stood in front of a police station and used that mind power, that collective psychic force to, to destroy okay. these police. And when I say police, I'm talking about them as a physical presence that has had their foot on our neck for so long and that have been conspirators to, to our demise as a people. Do we have that power? Can we tap into that, uh, that, that resource of power that we have? Will we ever get there? And, and just one more question, because we know that this is all about who has the most power to guarantee death on this earth, and that is the Caucasian. And I've said for a long time that Caucasians create conditions that give birth to chaos. Mm. And I'm just wondering, will we ever get out of this quagmire that we find ourselves in as a race? And what do you think happens at death? And I'm going to hang up and listen. Wow, that's a mouthful, brother. Um, I do want to say that, first and foremost, if you're using your powers just to try to focus on a police car to blow it up, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can sense what you mean, which is, you know, I can sense what you mean, but it, it's even better, excuse me, because um, it's even better when you don't waste your spiritual energy right. on something that would disappear when you begin to become more powerful within yourself. If you did have that power, you would not need to do that. In fact, I think that collectively speaking, when quote-unquote, black people begin to come to the knowledge of themselves completely, and we begin to pull the plug of our participation in this whole system of, en of entrainment and say no more. Once we s sit down, we put down the chains, we put down the, the, the working tools, we put down the cotton bag that we gather in the cotton from, everything. We stop for at least a month and don't mm. do anything, okay. anything. 
-hmm. everything collapses. Okay. So that power could be focused collectively on something that is constructive rather than destructive. It's going to destroy itself, my beloved. The, the fact of the matter is, any power you put out of that kind will come back twice to you. That's right. So what you need to do now is to focus <laughs> that kind of attention mm. on something that will begin to grow you, and in that growth will you destroy that thing that suppresses you. Amen. Now, as far as the, the, the Caucasoid creating chaos, we know that that's been his job from the time he came here. Uh -huh. His job is to create chaos. His job is to show you what you created when you dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. So now, our attention, and I think you, you if you had... Left. Okay, I, okay, here's the deal. Attention is the number one thing that keeps us focused. Mm -hmm. If we pay attention, it's which right. is the value, the value the that we have, our oh, consciousness, no. when we pay attention, we focus all of that creative mind power into the problems he tells you that you have. Until you have a serious understanding of what it takes for you to come out of the madness you're in, you cannot plan to bring yourself out of that because your attention is where he wants it. Mm. Hating him, worrying about That's him, right. dealing I, with I him, read once it ain't about him. About a understand. man. So now when you begin to see that and you begin to pull that energy out kind of move. and no longer participate uh, and entertain camera, that, your power no longer is now. being drained. Your power is no longer being sifted no, away. It is now being reserved and conserved for a greater purpose later on. Now it sounds like I'm beating around the bush than coming to the point, but if you deal with your metaphysical mind, you will understand exactly what I mean that the war is not with the gun anymore, it's with the mind. Amen. And it's where you put the mind power, where you focus it, where you concentrate it, and where you place and pay your attention. Hi, I'm just wondering... Uh, we don't have any more time, sorry. Uh, the God in me loves the God in you. Stay tuned. Next week, uh, have more. And Phil will be back, too. We're going to get him on his own show, matter of fact. And that's what we have to do. Thanks morning. for coming. Built, and the only way it's going to be nine, built with it, with it, it, it is with extreme methods. And I, for one, will join in with anyone. Don't care what color you are, as long as you want to change this miserable condition that exists on this earth. Thank you. shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? 